Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next game is Color TV Game Block Breaker. We're back in the land of the Color TV Game. This time, we're looking at Color TV Game Block Breaker, which is, you guessed it, a breakout clone. This actually wasn't Nintendo's first version of this game. Half a year earlier, Nintendo had released Block Fever in arcades, and this appears to be a port of sorts. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any way to play the arcade version. Otherwise, I would have done so. At least I was able to get a hold of this version. While Nintendo technically made one more color TV game, computer TV game, that one is extremely rare, and I was not able to obtain it. That makes this one the last color TV game in the challenge, at least for now. Similar to the other color TV games, the controls are all in Japanese. The big button on the left is the serve button, and the red button is the reset button. The switch on the far left is the power switch, the switch in the middle is the level select, 1 through 6, and the last switch is the life select, 3, 5, and 7. While Color TV Game Racing 112 included both single player and two player modes, Block Breaker exclusively features a single player mode. My goal for this game was to beat every round, and since I don't really care to beat them all with the various life settings, I played through the game using the 7 life option. I decided to start with level 1. Little did I know, the levels generally got easier as you went along, so I started with the hardest one. The game, unsurprisingly, plays a lot like Breakout. The player controls the pad on the bottom, and your objective is to reflect the ball into all of the blocks on the top. If you miss the ball, you lose a life. The game features two primary mechanics that crank up the difficulty as you progress. Each block has a specific color, and as you go further up, each new color of block will increase the speed at which your ball moves. The fastest speed, caused by the orange blocks in the back, was really fast, and I often had a hard time keeping up with it. The second difficult mechanic was that the paddle would shrink if the ball hit the top of the screen. Combine this with the faster ball speed, which was usually already active by this point, and it was pretty difficult to close out some of these levels. I lost my first attempt with 8 blocks still remaining. After learning my lesson from Space Fever, I decided to try out the other modes first, in case they were any easier. Turns out, my suspicions were correct. Level 2 was just an easier version of level 1. The setup was nearly identical, with the only difference being that they removed a row of the yellow blocks. In the end though, this didn't actually make too big of a difference, since most of the difficulty comes from the last few rows. I lost again, but this time with only 5 blocks remaining. Once again, I decided to try the next level, and once again, it was even easier. This time, there was a row of blocks behind the paddle, which acted as a safety net. The blocks behind the paddle would get destroyed when they were hit, but they weren't required to beat the actual level. Even this wasn't enough to save me, and I lost with 3 blocks remaining. After failing level 3, I decided to try the next level before going for full completion. This is where things started to get weird. The mechanics of the game completely changed for levels 4 through 6. Now, the ball passes through the blocks, making it much easier to break them all. Instead of each block giving you points, the number on the top left has been turned into a timer. I think the intention was that this level wasn't focused on how high of a score can you get, but rather, how quickly can you beat the level. The overall design of this level was much easier, and I cleared it up on my first try with a time of 375. Not really sure what the units are here. For the fifth level, they pit the player against a boss of sorts, or at least what seemed like a boss. The blocks once again reflected the ball in this mode, but there were mysterious flashing purple blocks in the back this time around. This must have been the boss's weak point, since once I broke them all, the entire structure came crashing down. This confused me a lot at first, and I had no idea what was going on. After the blocks fall, there's nothing left to do. I can move the paddle, but the ball was gone. Level complete, uh, I think. The 6th level was another boss level, and this one looked like a UFO. Once again, there were purple flashing weak points. This time around, the ball passed through the blocks similar to level 4. This honestly made the level even easier than the last one, and the UFO came crashing down with a time of 162. With levels 4 through 6 complete, I returned to level 3, the next easiest level. I was starting to get better at this point, and I beat it on my first try with 3 lives remaining. The game doesn't actually end once you clear all the blocks, and the level rebuilds itself so you can keep going. In true high score chaser fashion, this level was ultimately endless, but I was satisfied with just clearing all the blocks at least once. After this, I returned to level 2 and beat it on my first try. I followed this with a return to level 1 and finished it with another first try victory, although this one was a bit closer. With that, I had beaten all the levels and I was done with the game. On to the review. While I did like the single player focus, and the fact that there were multiple levels with clear endings, not everything about this one totally works. I found the difficulty spike of the later parts of the levels to be a little too drastic, and some of the later levels felt a little strange and generally went by too quickly. Like I've said for many of the other color TV games, there's some fun to be had in the simplicity, but it just doesn't have lasting appeal. I gave the game a 5 out of 10. 
Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on the next one. Also, leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it'll help the channel grow and motivate me to continue the series. I hope I will see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.